Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on what's new in QQ Catalyst version 3.7. All right, let's get going. Um, Marketing Central and QQ Catalyst version 3.7, we've created a central location for you to handle all things marketing in QQ Catalyst. That includes uh, your images library, your template library, your distribution list, and we're going to be talking about what you can do now with 3.7, which is schedule print jobs and email jobs as well as view the history for the jobs that have been completed for the agency and who were the recipients of those jobs. So, so long as you have the permission to create bulk jobs in QQ Catalyst and you have the ability to go to the marketing section, I'm going to show you how you can schedule emails and schedule print jobs using uh, these new features that we've created in these new fields for smart dates in your distribution list and reports. So you'll be able to send out things like cancellation letters or thank you letters or renewal letters automatically using QQ Catalyst. We've also added the ability for the agency to have a text signature. And these text signatures are per location and they will be appended to all outbound text messages to your contacts. So in the case that you wanted to include a disclaimer, something like coverage cannot be started, stopped, or changed via text message communications, you can all automatically have that included in all of your outbound text messages. I'll show you how to set that up. We also have MMS support now in QQ Catalyst. So when your customers would like to text you images of their vehicles, or if they wanted to send you an inspection, a copy of an inspection photo from the, for their uh, homeowners policy, they'll be able to send those to you and you can automatically have those received and attached in QQ Catalyst. And I'll show you how that's going to work as well. We have claims download support now in QQ Catalyst. So as your carrier sends you claims and updates to existing claims, Catalyst will be able to process those files. And I'm going to give you all of this information at the end of today's webinar. Uh, we do have a knowledge base in QQ Catalyst, and we also have answers to frequently asked questions. Not only do we show you how to do the common things that are requested uh, from our training department, but we also have <coughs> answers to those frequently asked questions. Um, that you can find in a click of a finger. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the knowledge base as well as don't forget that QQ Catalyst has ongoing free training classes online you can attend. We have training classes on multiple days a week. And for those of you who can't attend the online training classes, we've recorded our training classes so you and your staff members can watch them on demand. We also have our feedback tool and I thank all of you who have been sending us feedback. What you're seeing in these new releases in QQ Catalyst are all coming from our customers' feedback. So we continue to listen to you as to what you need, and we're going to continue to provide these enhancements to you in the releases that we have over the year's time. Okay? So now let's pull open QQ Catalyst, and let's talk about what's been included here in the 3.7 group. All right, first we're going to start here on the QQ Catalyst dashboard. Um, before we go into Marketing Central, I'd like to show you all of the changes that we've made for those of you that use texting. And text messaging is a great way to stay in touch with your customer. Uh, you'll come to find that a lot of the new you know, millennials and the younger people, um, pretty much anybody who's using a smartphone nowadays, it's much more easy uh, for you to get in touch with them using a, a text message than it is to get them on the phone or to reply to an email. Uh, before it was, you know, call your customer, leave them a voice or message, then it was communicate with them via email. But now you'll notice that your customers are responding to you faster when they receive text message communication. That's why we spend a lot of time trying to get the text message uh, communication in QQ Catalyst to be a great feature, not only for the things that you want to send to your customer, but also for what your customer is going to be sending to you. So first, let's start off with the location preferences. All right, so for those of you who have access to location preferences, most likely just the agency administrators, you're going to go to location preferences in QQ Catalyst, and you're going to be clicking on the apps tab. And by the way, for those of you who have been experiencing some issues this morning, our development team has been working diligently to get the speed issue resolved. Um, we've updated a lot of code for this release, um, and they did see that there were some issues going on, but um, compared to earlier this morning, the issues have been getting better and they're still working on bringing Catalyst to full, uh, to full speed. So for those of you who are still experiencing issues, they are working on it. Just wanted to let you guys know that. So here in the Apps tab, in the text messaging section, you now have a signature. So all you have to do is click Edit. Right now, if you haven't entered this uh, information in, it's going to be blank, but you can put in the information that you would like appended to all outbound text messages um, for your contacts. 
right? So, you know, we recommend for those of you who have not uh, sent out a communication to your customers, letting them know what your text message phone number is, you might want to put something in the signature that says, hey, this is the name of your agency, you know, save this to your contact for us under our contact on your smartphone so we can communicate with you via text messaging. And you probably also want to include that disclaimer, that insurance disclaimer, that coverage can't be started, stop or change via text communication just in case they send you a text message at 7 in the, in the evening and no one's in the agency about a new car they purchased and no one got that information or they wanted their coverage increase, they send it via text message and you guys haven't been able to action um, anything from them that you're covered. Okay? So get your text signature in there and when you go to send a text message to your customer, you'll see in the pop-up the text signature automatically pulled in for you. So first let's start off with what we've changed on the dashboard. Your text messaging widget has been updated. If you take a look here, you can see the inbound text messages being shown to me with a green arrow. Uh, prior to this release, it was just a table that had three columns, but we've expanded it so you can view more information. So we have our inbound text messages, and we can also include the outbound text messages. If you click on this pinwheel setting, you can view both inbound and outbound. So I'm just going to put all here just to show you how different they look. The inbound text messages are going to have a green arrow pointing downward, letting you know that the text message came in. Anything that was sent from the agency is going to have a blue arrow, which is going to be an outbound text message, and you'll have the arrow pointing upwards and out. I don't think I have any outbound text messages. Let me see here. Yeah, it looks like everything I have here is inbound. But you see a blue arrow pointing outward, showing that the text message was sent out from the agency. The beginning of the text message is going to be at the top of the row. So there's the text message I received. You can click on the line for you to be able to view the text message. And as you can see, this customer sent me images of their new vehicle. Okay. You view the contact that the text message was sent from, as well as the body of the text message and any attachments that were sent. Now, I have received questions from some agents that ask, well, Dickinson, what type of attachments do you guys support? So long as the wireless carrier will allow them to send the attachment via text or MMS, Catalyst will be able to receive it, okay? So I think some carriers vary as to what you can send. Um, we won't be the ones to dictate that. The carrier will dictate it. But so long as they can send it via the text message, Catalyst will be able to receive it. Now, from this text message, you can reply directly to your contact by simply clicking on reply. And when you click reply, you're going to see we're going to grab the agency's uh, signature automatically appended. So if I say I have received the images, thank you for forwarding them to me. And I'm going to send that text message. All right, so you can now reply directly from the dashboard when you receive a text message from your customer or your prospect. Now, we not only gave you the ability to send text messages from the widget, because now you can send text messages by simply opening the message and clicking on reply. You can also click on the text icon next to the message, and it'll open up the reply pop-up as well. So either one will get you the ability to send the text message. Now, what if you only wanted to see the images or the attachment that was part of the text? You can click on this paperclip icon to open just the attachments, and let's just say you'd like to also include those attachments in your customer's file. So it's not enough that they just sent you the text message and it's part of the message. You want it to be in the Files tab. All you have to do is check off the images that you would like included in the Files tab and click Import, and we'll bring it into the Files tab for you. Okay? Now, you have the same interface here that you have for uploading files. We don't know what the name of the files are. You know, when the carrier sends us these images, it doesn't have a file name, so we just put File 1, File 2, File 3, and 4. If you'd like to change the title, just click Next, and you'll change the title. Let us know if it's associated to any policy, and then click Finish. Okay. So now when I go to that Customer's Files tab, I'm going to see those images uploaded. You can also go directly to your contact by clicking on the contact name. will bring you to the Customer's File. If you maximize the widget, you'll also be able to see the contents of all of the text messages that are in your widget. So you don't have to click on every single one. You'll be able to see a complete view of all of the text messages. Like in this case here, my customer sent me pictures of water damage from a water heater. You'll be able to see all the attachments for all your MMS messages. 
Now another update that we've done for texting is for those of you that wanted to reply to your contact directly from their text messages, their text message tab, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go over to Family Fresh Supermarket and I'm going to go over to their text message tab. Now, some of the features that I've just shown you, uh, the things that you can do from the widget on the dashboard, you can also do from the text messages tab. So I'm going to go over to the text messages tab, and you'll be able to import anything that's attached to a text message to your customer's file as well. So you don't only have to do it from the dashboard. Any text message that has an attachment, you're going to see that with this document paperclip here. So if you click on it, You'll be able to see anything that was attached to the file, and you can do the very same thing, where you check them off, and you select import, and we'll bring it into your customer's file. You'll also see any uh, signature that was included in the outbound text message as part of the same text message, okay? And we left a blank line here so you can see the difference between what the body of the text message was and what the signature was. Now, it's very important for this signature to be included in your text message. So in the case that your customer says, I never knew that you know, I couldn't bind coverage using text messaging, you can say the text message went out with this disclaimer that coverage can't be started, stop the change via text message. Now in the case that you'd like to send the text message to your customer directly from this tab, if you're already here, all you have to do is click on the customer's phone number, okay? So anything that's not the agency's phone number, you're going to see the agency's phone number can't be clicked, but any other phone number, you can click on it, it'll open the text message pop-up for you to send the text message. All right, so now let's talk about Marketing Central and QQ Catalyst. Prior to this release, if you hovered over marketing, you got a little drop-down menu that looks something like this. Well, we've updated the marketing section to be Marketing Central. Everything dealing with marketing is now going to be taken care of in this marketing section, including your images library, your template library, and your distribution list. For those of you who haven't been using Cheeky Catalyst for your marketing, this might be a really great time to get started. Not only do you, can you build templates using our HTML editor, we have merge fields that can auto-populate customer and policy information. So all you're going to do is build a template that says, hi, customer first name, um, we would like to thank you for purchasing your line of business policy with our agency. Your policy is set to expire on, and there are merge fields like expiration date or you know, cancellation date that you can auto-populate your customer information. So after you build a distribution list, um, and by the way, for those of you who haven't attended marketing training, I highly recommend that you sign up for the marketing training class so they can show you how to build these templates, how to build your distribution list, and now that you can schedule automated emails, it would be very easy for the agency to just set it and forget ever having to come back in here to create new emails manually because the system will do it for you automatically. Right? So let's talk about Marketing Central. So you have your images library, you have your template library, you have your distribution list. These are all tabs that you already had. What we've now added into the system is scheduled jobs, scheduled print jobs and scheduled emails, as well as your history tab, which shows you all the jobs that have already been completed so you can view the recipients of those jobs or go back and view the PDF that was generated for your customers. So now there are two ways for you to schedule a new job. You can go to the distribution list. And remember, your distribution list is nothing more but a report query that says where my customer status is active, where the policy status is active, and where the expiration date is, let's just say, this month. So every single time you go to create a job for that list, Catalyst will query your database to find customers that are active, where the policy status is active, and the expiration date falls within this month. So you can go to your list, let's say I have a birthday list here, and you can hover over Create Bulk Job. You can either run the job now, and that'll bring you through the current email or print workflow, or you can select Schedule. When you select Schedule, you're going to get the Schedule Job pop-up. Now again, I'm saying there are two ways to get this pop-up going. You can do it from the distribution list, which is going to open the pop-up, but we've also included an icon on the toolbar that says Schedule Job. So if you click here on Schedule New Job, you'll get the very same pop-up. So now, what kind of jobs can you schedule in the agency? Well, what letters are you constantly sending to your customers? It can be renewal letters, cancellation letters, expiration letters, birthday, you know, birthday wishes, 
um, you know, anniversary letters for your customer. You can, whatever it is that you can report on, you'll be able to schedule for Catalyst to do it for you automatically. So let's start first with our output. How do you want this job to be distributed? Is it going to be through a print job where we'll generate the huge PDF with all the customer, you know, letters generated and you just have to send it to your printer? Or do you, would you like to do it as a bulk email job? Let's start with the print job first. Um, everything down here is the same. Uh, the only thing that changes if you select a bulk print job versus a bulk email job is you don't get the from drop down for us to say who the email came from and you don't get the subject field. Okay? So that's the only thing that dif differentiates a bulk print job from a bulk email job. The first thing you're going to do is select your distribution list. So I'm going to say, let's say, if you have like a new business letter or a, thank or a new business list or a thank you list, like in this case, I'm going to say, you know, May, June, new business list. In your case, it'll just say new business list. All right? Now, file name. When we put this document in your customer's file, what title would you like it to be put under? So I'm going to say thank you letter. Uh, in this case, it's a print job, so I'm going to say mail to insure. So when you go to the files tab and you see the document that was generated, that's going to be the title of the file. Thank you letter mail to insure. Now, which agency location are you doing this for? I'm going to do it for my main office. And now, which template would you like to be generated for those customers that are part of that list? I have a couple of letters here, but I'm going to go for my thanking the customer. Let's say welcome thank you letter. So it's for all of my new business customers. They're going to get a thank you letter. What date would you like this job to be run? So I'm going to say that I want this job to start tomorrow. And what time would you like us to run this job? Now, keep in mind, if you have 500 customers, the job may start at 8 o'clock, but all your customers won't receive the email. If you schedule this for email, they won't all receive it at 8 o'clock. We're going to be sending these emails one by one until we get through the entire list. So it all depends on how many customers you have, but the job will start at 8. It may be done by 8.10 or 8.15. So make sure you choose a time that you would like these, uh, if you're doing emails, time that you would like your customers to start receiving emails. So I'm going to say, let's do this not at the beginning of the morning. Let's just do it at 11 o'clock in the morning. By default, we're going to pre-fill your time zone. Whatever the employee's default time zone is, we'll pre-fill it. But if you'd like to change it, you can also change it. But for most of you, you're going to be leaving that field alone. Now, how often would you like this job to run? If this is a one-time job, you're going to leave it as once, no recurrence. Now, what's the difference between the run now option and this option? If you do run now, you don't have the option of telling the system when to run the job for the one time. If you schedule it, you can set this today to run for tomorrow one time. So now, in the frequency, this is very important to note, if you're going to be using a distribution list that has a smart date that says anything about yesterday, today, or tomorrow, your options in this frequency drop-down are going to be once and daily. And we've built in a lot of logic to make sure you don't accidentally, let's just say, create a distribution list for people's birthdays, and then you choose for this year. So if you choose this year in your distribution list for birthdays, and then you come into the frequency and you say daily, Catalyst is going to send a happy birthday letter to everyone on that list every single day for this year. So we built in a lot of logic to make sure that you don't make a mistake here with the frequency. So in the case that you see two options in here as opposed to five, just know that your distribution list has a smart date of yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Okay? So in this case, I want to send this job every day. And remember, if it's going to be doing, a, where, let's just say you said a person with a new business policy with the effective date of today, we're only going to send this to a person one time. So they'll be part of the list to, you know, today, but they won't be part of the list tomorrow. So very important when you're building a distribution list to select smart dates instead of fixed dates. You don't want to build a distribution list that says everyone with an effective date of, and you put September 22nd, 2015. You want to put everyone with an effective date of and choose a smart date, a predefined date that says today. All right? So I have my daily frequency. Now, do you want it to go out every day or every weekday? Every day would be including Saturday and Sunday. Every weekday would just be Monday through Friday. So I'm going to say only Monday through Friday. And then you can tell us in the link how often, how, when do you want this job to end. If there's no end date and you want this to keep running until you tell it to stop, 
you can leave it at no end date. If you'd like the campaign to end at a certain date, let us know what the end date's going to be. And if you'd like the job to run for a certain number of occurrences, so only send these emails five times. And after that, stop. You can put five occurrences as well. So now, in the case that you don't select daily, if you select weekly, you have the option of choosing which day of the week that you'd like it to go out. So I want this to go out every single Monday. Or you can say every single Monday and every single Friday I want to send this email communication. If you select, by the way, if you select weekly, I recommend if you're going to choose Monday through Sunday, in that case you would just select daily and just make sure it's selected to every day. If you select monthly, Catalyst will know by, the, by whatever date that you put here as the start date, when's the next time you want to run the job. So if you say here, start date is going to be September 23rd, but you say the first day of the month, the very next job that's going to be scheduled is for the month of October on October 1st. You can say first day, last day, or a specific day of the month. So if you want it to always run on the 15th, you can schedule it to run every single month on the 15th. And since today was selected as a start date, it knows you don't want to go back and do September 15th. It's going to schedule October 15th for the next job. Now, for those of you who are going to select things like the 31st, I highly recommend that you do not come in and select the 30th or the 31st here. Because as a report query, it's going to look for whatever month, whichever month has the 30th and the 31st. So it's going to skip February. Instead of doing that, you want to make sure you select the last day of the month. So we'll always calculate whichever the last day is for that month. You can also select yearly. So for those of you who are going to want to send out communications to your customers, wishing them a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, or a Happy New Year, you're going to select yearly. Let us know what the date is that you'd like this to be sent. So in the case that you want to do your Christmas communications, you're going to come in and say, well, nobody's really going to be expecting to hear from my agency on the 25th. Maybe I want to send that on the 21st every year and just say, we at the agency would like to wish you a very happy holidays or a very Merry Christmas or a very happy New Year. And it's going to do this every year on this date. So the, the, as soon as this job is done on December 21st, 2015, we're going to schedule the very next one. If you have no end dates here, we're going to very schedule the very next one for December 21st, 2016. And at 11 a.m. on that date, we're going to send out this scheduled email, or the bulk print job is going to be scheduled for you. So I'm going to say that I want this to run once with no recurrence. And I'm going to schedule that for today. And let's make this go out on, what time is it right now? 1.54. So I'm going to say 2 p.m. And then I'm going to come back to show you guys how this is going to look in your history tab when the job is actually completed. Now, in the case that you have some field that's not filled out and it's mandatory, Catalyst will let you know in red that you need to fill that section out. All right, so now, the scheduled jobs tab. In the case that you'd like to know which jobs are going to be done by the system, you're going to see them all here in the scheduled jobs tab, and they're going to be ordered in the order of the next one to be run. So whatever's going to run today, you're going to see that today. Anything scheduled for tomorrow will be underneath it, and anything scheduled after that will be underneath those. Now, what can cause a job not to run even though you've scheduled it to run? One of the things that can cause it not to run is if you selected a template but then deleted the template, Catalyst will automatically disable that job because we don't have a template to send. Or if you have a distribution list that's on a scheduled job and you delete the distribution list, Catalyst will also disable that job. If there's a user who schedules the job and that user is about to be deleted, Chief Catalyst will let you know that this user has scheduled the job to be run. Please go and update the scheduled job to another employee, and then you can either delete that employee or make them inactive or revoke their license. But so long as that person is tied to an active job, you won't be able to delete them until you reassign it to someone else in the agency. So I highly recommend that whoever scheduling jobs would be the agency administrator, you know, the manager for the office, someone who you know will be in the agency without any problems, um, without being deleted or marked inactive. But if, in the case that you go to mark them inactive, we'll let you know, hey, go update the jobs before you delete this person. Okay. So you're going to see the name of the distribution list, the description, the template name, and the description if you have one, who scheduled the job and what date they scheduled the job, and then when the job is scheduled to run and how it's going to be distributed. In the case that you need to make any changes, you're just going to left click and you can edit the scheduled job. You can delete it 
or you can disable it in the case that you wanted to stop this campaign for now, but you don't want to delete all the stuff that you set up. You just want to re-enable it at some point. You can also disable it. Now, I'm going to wait for the job to run, and then we'll come back in here so I can show you what it looks like in the history tab. And again, for those of you who haven't taken the marketing training class as of yet, I do recommend that you sign up. They'll walk you through building campaigns, especially the ones that you're going to have um, consistently. The ones that you're doing manually right now, if you're not going to, uh, I highly recommend that you don't do them manually anymore. Just have Catalyst do it for you. But they'll walk you through scheduling your campaigns, um, how to schedule the jobs, not only to be email, but print jobs and how you can take care of uh, all of these things that you probably devoted 15 to 20 to 30 minutes a day doing yourself and alleviating yourself of that time and just having the system do it. And if you have any questions on what I just demonstrated, well, we have a lot of Q&A time scheduled for the end of the webinar. I'll be happy to go over this again for you. All right, so we talked about Marketing Central. We talked about text messages. Um, picture message support as well as the text message widget redesign. Let's talk about smart dates that we've added to your reports and your distribution list. So I'm going to come in to add a new list. And this is what I was talking about earlier where you can build a distribution list that queries your database for customers that meet some criteria. So let's build one together just so I can show you how you're going to be using smart dates. So I'm going to select in the cate customer category, customer information, policy information. Let's build one of these together quickly. Now, let's go with the scenario of I'd like to increase my cost selling in my agency. I have customers that have personal auto at the agency. They don't have homeowners. So I would like to, if they have personal auto and they don't have homeowners, I would like to put them on a homeowners campaign that's going to send them an email, let's say once a month, telling them, hey, we'd like to thank you for having your personal auto policy with the agency. I see that you don't have homeowners. Did you know that we offer homeowners with the highly, some of the highly rated carriers in the state of Florida or in the state of Texas? We would be happy to give you a quote. Please give us a call. Now, that query looks for customers with personal auto, with an active personal auto, without an active homeowners. So the second that you write that homeowners policy for that customer, they're going to fall off this list, and you don't have to worry about coming in and removing them. The system will do it automatically for you. All right, so let's go with that example. All right, well, the customer status is active. And now I'm going to select the policy status is also active. Let's add another one in here. Where the line of business in the customer list, so I'm looking for an active line of business with my customer that has personal auto. And that's in their list. I'm going to add line of business a second time, but this time I'm going to say not in the list is homeowners. So they have an active personal auto policy with me, but not an active homeowners policy with me. So now this distribution list, once I save it, every single time a scheduled job is going to happen, Catalyst is going to look in my database for customers with personal auto, an active personal auto with no active homeowners, and whatever template I built to target those customers, Catalyst will send it to them by email, or I can print documents to mail to those people. Now, for those of you that are going to be using smart dates, very important, especially for those of you that have been asking for the birthday one, uh, that it was really complicated to set up this, uh, set up a distribution list with people's birthdays. We built a new field for you, so you can go back and update your distribution list and your templates to include it. The field is called Customer Next Birthday. What Catalyst is going to do is calculate when the person's next birthday is going to be coming up. So if someone was born on September 23rd, 1970, their next birthday is September 23rd, 2016. So you're going to use customer next birthday. And instead of using is between or before and after, use smart date. And I want to use the smart date of today. So Catalyst, run a, run a report and find me every customer with a birthday of today and send them an email wishing them a happy birthday from the agency. So you no longer have to put in a specific day or a specific month. Just put in today. We'll do the calculations for you. Just let us know which template you would like for us to send out to them. You're going to do the same thing for any, any date field. So if you wanted to do, let's just say, an effective date. So if you want to say, let's say, every customer, an active customer with an active policy that has an effective date of, instead of putting today's date in here, you're just going to say with a smart date of today, 
and you can say where well, the policy business type is new business. So let's just say business type here. And I'm looking for policy business type. Where well, the policy business type is new business, and the effective date is today, I can send them a new business thank you letter. Hey, thank you for writing your personal auto policy with our agency. You know, we have a full line of products and services that we offer. Feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. And Catalyst can do this for you automatically. And remember, it's only going to send it to people with a new business policy with today's effective date. So you don't have to worry about accidentally blasting the same customer for the same policy again. They won't be part of this list once we run the query again when we go to do the job tomorrow. So in your reports, as well as in your distribution list, I highly recommend that you use these smart dates. We wrote them in for you today, tomorrow, yesterday, next 30 days, next 60 days, next 90 days, this year, next year, month to date, year to date. Highly recommend that you guys use these smart dates. All right, we've made a couple of changes to uh, policies and contacts in QQ Catalyst. So I'm going to come over to my contact here, Family Fresh Supermarket. Uh, by the way, thank you all very much uh, for those of you that wanted the policy, uh, any policy that's canceled or expired in your policy list to be read. Uh, we went ahead and made those changes for you in Kiki Catalyst version 3.6. Now what we've done in 3.7 is any policy that's canceled or expired, we put them at the bottom of your policy list. So you'll always see your active policies first, followed by any policies that have been canceled or expired. Um, that was one of the biggest complaints that we received from um, our customer base. As Dickinson, we have all these canceled policies in between our active policies. We only want to see the active policies up top with the canceled and expired policies underneath. We've implemented that for you. We've also made some changes to uh, the Accord Form 130. For those of you who had submitted requests for Accord Form 130 to be updated, it has been updated to the latest version. Both Accord Form 130 and Accord Form 130 SL have been updated. And for those of you who have multiple locations on these Accord Form 130s, um, the Accord Form currently holds three locations. We've updated the form to include a supplemental. So in the case that you have more than three locations, the system will automatically add the form, uh, locations four through whatever number of locations you have, it'll automatically add that for you. So you don't have to manually generate uh, that form a second time for all the additional locations. Um, for those of you that had submitted the request for the HTML editor, uh, one of the most annoying things people found about HTML for any HTML editor is that when you hit enter, the system will automatically do a double space instead of a single space. Um, we have actually updated the code in the editor that we use to make it a single space for you. So for those of you who are asking for that, we have taken care of it for you. If you hit enter, it's now going to be single space. We've also updated the code inside the editor to always keep your formatting. Uh, we were having an issue where users were typing in information into the editor and then when they went to generate an email or a print job, the font looked different. It was a different size. Things were in different places. So we've updated the editor to keep your formatting. You should have a better experience with the HTML editor now. Now let's see, what other columns can I talk about that we've updated for you? Uh, for those of you who had submitted the request concerning user licenses, if you make a user uh, and I don't mean the actual license, but if you make a user in Catalyst inactive, the employee contact is inactive, Catalyst will automatically make the user license also inactive. So you no longer have to worry about making someone inactive and them not showing, uh, and them still having access to the system because their license wasn't made inactive. We now make the user license inactive as well. All right, so here's the Family Fresh Supermarket, and here are all their active policies first, and then as you go to the next pages, then you'll see all of their canceled and expired policies, all right, and they will be sorted by the expiration date. So you'll see all the canceled and expired policies listed underneath. I'm sorry, not expiration date, but the actual effective date. For those of you that were, uh, we did receive some requests concerning the claims download drop down for the type of claim. We've added a lot more options in there for you. Uh, Kiki Catalyst version 3.6, we had version 1 of claims. We've now added a second version, version 2. Uh, we've added the ability of not only receiving claims downloads, but you have a 
additional options here in this claim type dropdown. So whether it was an animal, mall, bite or attack, burglary, collapse, collision, comprehensive, we had a lot of requests for earthquake and earth movement, or injury on the job from electrical shock or a falling object or you know, a slip and fall, workplace violence, we've added a lot of options in here for you. Um, if there's an option in here that you don't see that's common, we did uh, speak to the carriers. We looked through all of the AL3 files from the carriers for claims downloads. Um, we think we have everything covered on the list, but just in case we don't, uh, you can go ahead and send us that information through the feedback. If anything's missing from here that's common for claims, we'll be happy to add those in there, but we think we got a really good list here going for you. Another thing that we've done is we've updated the homeowner's policies. Uh, we received a lot of requests concerning the homeowner's policies that you weren't able to see the full address of the location that was insured and also when you were importing additional interest onto a policy, you weren't able to see the full address of the additional interest. Let's just use, let's say, Bank of America for an example. Bank of America may have 15 different locations that do servicing for loans. Um, and so when you were importing an additional interest, all you saw on your list was Bank of America. You didn't get a chance to see what the address is. That pop-up has been updated to now show you the address for all of your additional interests. So you can select the correct one. Now, for those of you that also had uh, workers' comp, NTCI, we have updated the NTCI workers' comp list to include some additional values. I believe that we had some coming from Texas, from California, from New York that were missing from the list. We've added those in. Uh, basically, the NTCI list is a global list, and there are some things that are specific to the carriers in those states. So in the case that you see something that you need that's not on the list, just send it to us in the feedback. We don't even have to wait until an actual release to get those updated. We can just update that list as we receive those requests. So if you have additional NCCI codes that you don't see from your state, we'll be happy to add those in for you. For those of you that do commercial property, we have done an update to commercial property to correctly order the premises uh, this is a request that we've gotten several times. The premises on commercial property were reordering incorrectly. They were showing as 1, 10, 11 through 19, and then going to 2. Uh, we fixed that issue for you so you no longer have to worry about the sort order. The sort order has been corrected, and it has also been corrected when we map over to the Accord form. So for those of you that were getting the Accord forms generated in the wrong order, that's been corrected as well. And for those of you with Accord Form 140 that had additional coverages, um, as you know, Accord Form 140 only has five lines for coverages for each premises. We've created a coverage supplemental that will take coverages six through whatever number you have and automatically generate an additional page for you. Okay? So for those of you that do a commercial property, you should have a much better experience. Here's that location information I was talking about for your personal, uh, for your homeowners. And it's the same thing for your uh, homeowners. We fixed it for homeowners as well. Personal auto and homeowners, dwelling fire, renters and condo. When you click to import your additional interest, you'll see the additional interest with their name as well as with their address. By the way, for those of you that are reporting the, uh, the, the catalyst issues today, yes, the development team is aware of it. They are working to correct uh, the issues that you're receiving uh, or that you're experiencing concerning, concerning the slowness. Um, so far today, they've been able to resolve at least two of the issues that were causing uh, the slowness that you've been experiencing, but there's something outstanding that they're still working on. Uh, we are working to resolve the issue. Just wanted to let you know that we are aware of it. Another update that we've made is for those of you that are, uh, for those of you that are using the Accord Form 50, uh, there are some people that were adding Accord Form 50 to a customer without having a personal auto policy or a commercial auto policy on file. So the system wasn't pre-filling the agency's address information. We have updated uh, the Accord Form 50 to fill in the agency's information even when the form is added directly to the customer and not with a policy on file. Another thing that we've done to help the bookkeepers especially, whoever's working on commission reconciliations, we've added the reset commission button on the producer tab on the policy. Now we've done two things. First we've added on the producer tab. So if you have access to the producer tab, you can always click reset commission to find the updated commission rule for that set of producers. But also, if you add or remove a producer on a policy, Catalyst will automatically launch that action. So if you add a new producer, 
to a policy and there was already an existing producer, Catalyst will now look for the commission rule for both of those producers. We resolved an issue in QQ Catalyst version 3.7 where you had a prospect in the system and then a download came in for that prospect and Catalyst was not uh, changing them to a customer. We've resolved that issue for you so you shouldn't have to uh, experience that anymore. And that wraps up what we've taken care of for you in Kiki Catalyst version 3.7. Actually, I'm, I'm lying. There was one more thing that we updated. Uh, in the task widget and the My Task page, tasks were being sorted by date, but the secondary sort wasn't working. It wasn't sorting by priority. So now when you see tasks, you're going to see them sorted by date first, what's due first, and then by priority. High priority always being first, followed by uh, medium, low, and then no priority. And that's QQ Catalyst version 3.7. Um, we have another release before the end of the year here coming up in the month of November. And uh, it will have a lot of features that you guys have requested. For those of you wanna, who want a sneak peek of what's going to be included in QQ Catalyst version 3.8, we are going to be working on some policy details. Uh, for those of you who have requested garage, professional liability, we are working on those policy details for you for QQ Catalyst version 3.8. We're also starting to do our implementation for email integration in QQ Catalyst so that you can actually use your Outlook account or your Gmail account to send and receive emails and for us to automatically attach those emails to your customers' files in QQ Catalyst. It's going to be a great release. And again, all of this is coming from your feedback. So we do recommend that you continue to send us your feedback. For those of you, <laughs> I read every item in the feedback folder, by the way, that we receive. Some of the uh, comments are very funny. You guys, some of you guys should just double the stand-up comedians. I appreciate your, your humor <laughs> in the feedback folder. Um, some people just continue to send the same feedback request over and over and over again. They're like, I'm just going to send this again just to make sure you didn't forget. Believe me when I tell you, none of your requests are being overlooked or forgotten. You just be very amazed as to how many requests we receive from, if I could tell you we receive 100 requests from agents on the same feature, I can say 65 agents want it one way, 35 want it the other way, or 50 people want it to work one way, and 50 people want it to work the other way. And there's a delicate balance between what you want your agency to be able to do versus what all the other agents want a feature to do in QQ Catalyst. And we try to do our very best to speak to as many of you as possible to make sure our implementation works for the majority of the people using QQ Catalyst. So I don't want anybody to feel discouraged. If something you've requested hasn't made it as of yet, we are working through that list tirelessly. And you can see we've had, let's see, how many, this is this might be our fifth or sixth release for, of the year. We're going to continue aggressively having releases in Catalyst, and it just keeps getting better and better, and it's going to continue to get better based on what you guys have been recommending for us to do. So I uh, thank you all very much for joining us for today's webinar. If you've typed the question into the question window, I'm going to be standing by to answer every one of your questions until I get through them all. So if you have the time, stick around with us for our Q&A session. For those of you who don't have any questions, thank you very much for being a Chief Catalyst subscriber. And I appreciate all of the uh, feedback that you've given us. And I'm hoping that uh, you enjoy all these new features that we just added in. Thank you very much. All right, so now let's get going with our Q&A session. Let me get the questions section open here, and we'll get all these questions answered. Okay, how do I add the text message widget? The text message widget is part of the gallery uh, inside your widget gallery. So if you click here on Add Widget, you're going to see the text message widget as part of the table widget. Where is my text message widget? Right here, text messages. Mine is already on my dashboard, but if you see it green, that means it's not on yours. Just click to add the text message widget from the tables tab in your widget gallery. Okay, got a great question. How do I start a new text message? All right, to send a text message, you're gonna go over to your contact and you can only send text messages to phone numbers that already exist in QQ Catalyst. Very important. And we did that on purpose to make sure your agency is protected in the case of an ENO. Okay? So it's very important to make sure that text message phone number is inside Catalyst on one of your contacts. 
So long as it's a cell phone number, you're going to be able to send a text message. And by the way, I'm glad, I'm glad that you asked that question because I'm going to explain another issue that customers have been, uh, have been expressing to me. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Right here, wherever you see a, text, a cell phone number, you're going to see this icon here for you to send a text message. Just click on the icon and you can start typing up your text message. Okay. I get a question from um, our customers often. Dickinson, why did you guys remove home and cell from this basic contact information for commercial contacts? Um, the reason we did it is because businesses don't have cell phone numbers. Um, businesses don't have home numbers. But a person who works for that business may have that cell phone number or a home number. So what we've done is we wanted to make sure that what you put up here is information specifically relating to the business, their, their main phone number, the customer relations line, the, uh, you know, the product support line, the technical support, or the IT phone. Those are the, that's the information that you want to put up here. The phone number that actually belongs to a person that you speak to at that business, you should put that here in the business contact section including their cell phone number, their email address for that specific person. Now, we're not done with this section just yet because we don't want to have both a business contact section and have an employee section because those might be one and the same people. So what we want to do is consolidate those two sections into one section so you'll be looking at the business contacts and you'll see who's the primary contact, you'll see if they're an employee of the business and whatever their position may be and you can do that all in the very same section. So that's the reason that we did that. We did one version first to get everyone used to where to get the contact information, and then we're going to be consolidating those so you can have them all in one place. Okay. Now, it's not the same as the personal. On your personal contacts, in the basic contact information, you're going to have that person's cell phone number, their home number, and their personal email address. And then in the additional contacts, you have whoever else, you know, the husband, the wife, the son, or the daughter. But again, for the business contacts, the cell phone number belongs to a person. So put that information down in the business contacts, and whoever's the primary contact, just make sure they're marked off as primary. Okay, got a question. We don't have text messaging in our system, but you'd like to have it included. Go ahead and contact your sales rep. I'm not sure um, who your sales rep is, but get in touch with your sales rep, and it is a feature that you can add on into QQ Catalyst. They'll talk to you all about the pricing to have it included. And again, this is something I'm going to highly recommend to all of you. For those of you who aren't using text messaging, you're going to notice now every single person in America now has a smartphone. Everyone has smartphones. And the people that don't want smartphones, I, can, I guess I can understand why they don't want smartphones. They're like, okay, I don't need a smartphone. I don't want to be glued to my phone all the time. But the average consumer today is on the go and they have their smartphone on them all the time. And they're more likely to respond to a text message than they will from a phone call, or from an email. And it's a great way to communicate with them quickly um, wherever they are and for them to communicate with you as well. So if you're not using the text messaging feature, I mean, just give it a try. Give it a go and see how well this is going to be able to impact your communications with your customers. And now that we have the ability to not only receive the text messages, but also the attachments that they're sending you, uh, it's going to open up a brand new world for your communications with your customers. So if you want more information on adding it to your existing plan, I'm not sure which plans you have, but uh, get in touch with your sales rep either by sending them an email or getting them on the phone and ask them to for pricing on adding it to your existing plan. Okay, got a question. Do text messages show up on the log file? Text messages don't show up in the log because of the fact that we have them here in the text messages tab. They have the entire history of the text messages are showing up in this text message tab. So anything that doesn't show up in its own tab, those things go into the log. Like when you upload a file, the file itself is in the files tab, but everything that's been happening because of that file, all of that's going to go to the log, like changes to it. Right now, you can't really see all the changes made to a file in the files tab. You can see it in the log, but the text messages is its own log of communication. By the way, for those of you who have asked about the log, we are going to be making some significant changes to the way we track activities and audit logging in QQ Catalyst coming up in the next two releases. So for those of you who have been inquiring on, I want to be able to report on my employee activity. I want to see how many phone calls they made throughout the day, how many emails were sent, when they logged in, when they logged out. QQ Catalyst, we're going to be making changes to first off be able to store that data and then give you the ability to report on it. So for those of you who have been asking for it, it is on the way. 
Okay, got a question concerning automatic text messages. Right now, no. Right now, it's just bulk email and bulk print jobs. The next thing to be included will be bulk text messaging as well. So we wanted to build Marketing Central out first, update the text messages, do the text messaging updates you've been asking for, and then we're going to also be including in one of the next upcoming releases to do bulk texting as well. Okay, got a great question. What happens if you schedule a job and your internet goes down? Once you schedule that job and you hit save, we don't have, you don't have to worry about anything on your end. Catalyst has that information and will run the job whether your internet is up or down, whether you're logged in or not. You don't have to be logged in for any of those jobs to work. Catalyst will run those jobs. Once you log in, you're going to be able to see that the job was already completed. And let me show you where you're going to be going here. Let me go back to the marketing section. That's a great question. I've had that question asked. If I'm not logged in, what happens? You don't have to be logged in. We'll take care of it for you. So long as you hit save and it's saved. So anything that's outstanding, you'll still see here in the scheduled jobs tab for anything that's going to be running. I think the one that I set up earlier today was a one-time job, so there's nothing left here that's scheduled. But the job that was actually completed, you'll see it here in the history tab. Now, this is another great thing I wanted to show you. You can see the recipient that received the job that you sent out. If we ran the report query and no one was part of that query, it's going to show you bulk print zero recipient. That means nothing was generated because there was no one that met your criteria. I don't have anybody in my book of business that I wrote a new business policy for that has an effective date of today. So there was no job to be done. So now tomorrow, if I had this on a schedule, Catalyst will run the same query again to see are there any new business policies with an effective date of today, and Catalyst would send it to all those customers. So if you're going to be doing something like that, I don't know what time your agency typically closes. Most agencies close around 5 or 6 o'clock. You probably want this job to run at the end of the day where you're no longer putting in new business policies for the day after. You, know what I mean? you might want to choose you know, uh, where, where, new, where the uh, policy business type is new business with an effective date of yesterday, and then the following day you'll be sending these people the thank you letters. So in the case that you see bulk print or bulk email zero recipients, that means the report query found no one that matched your criteria. All right, when a new customer has a policy issue, can a schedule be set up to email them a thank you automatically? Absolutely, you can easily do that. You build your distribution list to say where the customer status is active, where the policy status is active, where the policy business type is new business, and where the effective date is today. And Catalyst will automatically, once you schedule that job, Catalyst will automatically send them an email saying thank you for writing that line of business with your agency. Okay, got a great question. Can we send out photos via text message? At this time, no, you cannot send photos via text message. Now, this is what I'm going to recommend. When we were looking over the request for uh, text messages, we received maybe three requests of the 1,700 agencies that are using Kiki Catalyst. We received maybe three requests that they had like to send out pictures. That's why it's very important for you guys when you want to feature in Catalyst to send it through the feedback because the more requests you send or the more agents that send the request for that item, the more likely it's going to be implemented. Not necessarily, I don't want to say immediately, but it would be one of the things that we want to get addressed as soon as possible. Okay, so if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and submit that in the feedback that you'd like to be able to send photos via text message from QC Catalyst. All right, got a question that says, marketing emails that are about to be that is set for events, does Catalyst have the ability to notify a user when a campaign is about to begin? What Catalyst is going to do is notify you when the job actually begins. So here in this notification, by the way, um, we were in a different section when it showed the notification, but it did give me a system alert that the bulk email was starting. It did say the bulk email started or the bulk print job has started. It will let you know when the job is started and when the job is completed. So it will be part of your system alerts. Whoever it was that scheduled the job, you'll get the alert that the job was scheduled. All right, got a great question. Will it send a birthday email to all contacts in a customer? Unfortunately, no. 
right now when QQ Catalyst does a query for a customer, when it's a personalized customer, it's looking for whoever the customer is. When it's a commercial customer, it's looking for whoever's marked off as the primary contact for that customer contact. So it's not going through every single person that's a part of your list. Now here's what I can recommend. What I can recommend is if you have a person who has, let's just say, you, you, you wrote the policy for the husband and you have the wife as an additional contact and you have the son as an additional contact and the daughter as an additional contact, if you don't have, um, let's just say, all the policies written for every single person in the family, you might want to also create those people as contacts themselves. Make sure you include them as link contacts for the primary contact and then when you're sending out things like birthday email blast, Catalyst will pick them up as part of the um, as part of the query. Because right now the query says, find me the customer and the customer's birthday. It can't also find customers with their additional contact and hope to find their birthday and their email address. Because Catalyst is always going to be looking for the customer. Now what I'll do is um, I'll speak to our development team to see if there's any way to also include them in the list. Uh, but as of right now, it doesn't include them in the list. So if you're looking for a workaround, um, you can easily create the contacts themselves with their birthday. I'm not sure if you're going to be you know, trying to cross-sell them too, uh, try to get their personal auto or their life insurance or you know, um, if they decide to move out on their own to get their renter's insurance. But I'll, I'll make sure I mention that to my development team. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you submit that through the feedback so I can get that over to them as well. All right, got a great question. Effective date next 30 days will keep sending every day until they're not in the list anymore. Yes. If you put the next 30 days, if that person is part of that, if they're, if they're effective, they fall to the next, next 30 days, and you have a frequency of, let's say, daily, that is going to keep sending it to them every day. So that's definitely what you don't want to do. You don't want to do, you know, next 30 days and then send something daily. Uh, you want to definitely make sure you're doing the correct frequency with whatever smart date you select. All right, what if a client has two policies with us? Would they receive two letters or two emails if we do a bulk email or mail out? No. It will only do that if you have policy information on your mail out. So let's just say you wanted to send your customers a uh, happy Thanksgiving. We have Thanksgiving upcoming and you want to send everybody a happy Thanksgiving uh, email. When you do, when you're choosing your distribution list uh, criteria, your report column, do not select anything policy related. You're going to look for all of your customers where the customer status is active. That's all you're going to look for, where my customer status is active and you want to send every one of your active customers an email saying happy Thanksgiving. Now, if you go in and put in policy information, you say where well, the policy status is active, Catalyst is going to do a query that says, find me a customer with an active policy. So if your customer has five active policies, Catalyst is going to consider that five different people that it needs to send the email to because they have five active policies based on the report query. So make sure if you only want something to go to a customer one time, it most likely has nothing to do with their policy. Don't include policy information on your report criteria. Okay, I have, a, I have a, another question that says, how, have you, how can you view past emails that have been sent in QQ? For anything that was a bulk email job prior to today's release, there's no way for you to see the recipients of that previous job. But today going forward, you'll always be able to come into the History tab if it was a bulk email, and you'll be able to see the recipients that were part of that email. Oh, got a great question. Is there an easier way to see which property location is insured on a policy without having to dig into every policy? Absolutely. When you go to the Policies tab, by default you're looking at the Policies list, change that to Locations. We're going to show you all insured locations on every single policy. By the way, you know, we're going to be having these informative webinars. Uh, look out for QQ emails because we're going to be having some informative webinars. We've been getting a lot of requests and the feedback for features that are already in QQ Catalyst. So we're going to be having some webinars on, hey, did you know this feature was in QQ Catalyst? And just show you. And all the releases, we do so many releases throughout the year that some of them just 
get um, get overlooked. Uh, so you can always view which locations are insured on whatever policy by simply changing the view from policy list to drivers. You can see which drivers on which policies, which locations are insured by which policies, and when you click on it, we'll take you to that policy, or which vehicles are insured on which policies. Okay, got a question. I was late into getting into the webinar. How can I get a copy of this? Yes, we're going to uh, be sending an email out with a copy of the webinar. It may be shorter than the one that you're hearing right now. Um, what I like, what I prefer to do, I know that not all of you have the ability to sit and watch the webinar for 40 minutes. So we're probably going to be sending you an email with little three-minute clips of each new feature, showing you how to use each feature. We're probably going to be doing that for this release. And it's going to take me a little time to do it, so if you can give me probably until, let's say, what's today, Tuesday, maybe Thursday or Friday, we'll be able to get this email out to you with how to use the new features that we just talked about, as opposed to having to sit through the 30-minute uh, or 50-minute webinar. I know a lot of people like the Q&A portion of the webinar, but you know, as opposed to including it in the recording, we'll just include the, here are the things that are new and here are the updates that we've made, and you can watch the three-minute clips of each new feature. I think you guys would appreciate that more. All right, I got a question that says, anything on commercial reference recommendation option? I'm not sure I understand that one. If you can um, give me a little more detail there, I'd be happy to answer for you. All right, got a question. When is 3.8 thinking of coming out? We're looking to release Kiki Catalyst version 3.8 sometime in no at either at the end of November, middle to end of November, or early December. Um, we know that a lot of agents take off during the week of Thanksgiving as well as um, some, you know, early when we get close to Christmas time. We know that the agency is usually running on a, a skeleton schedule, uh, at least skeleton operation with a lot of people being out. So I think it's going to be sometime either towards the end of November, mid to end of November, or early December. But you definitely want to stay tuned for the emails that we send out to let you know when a release is coming out. And again, that release is going to be really, really nice for those of you who have been requesting policy details for the garage, professional liability. And I thank you guys very much for being so open to talking to us. I've spoken to a lot of you over the phone. Whenever you request a feature and we start to develop it, I will call your agency and say, hey, listen, I got that request that you wanted. I'm working on the design. And we walk you through the design and ask you additional questions on how it should work. Um, so if you haven't been using the feedback tool, I highly recommend that you do. Good and bad, um, you know, we received really good comments in the feedback. Some people that say, you know, you guys did a really great job. And then, you know, we still have some of the agents that say, I will never say that Catalyst is a great product. Either way, look, I'm looking to make the people that are currently happy happier. The people who are not happy, we're looking to make you happy. So um, we're committed to that. And I think you can see with the aggressiveness that we have with our releases that we want to get as much into Catalyst that can make your life as easy as possible in the insurance agency. Okay, got a question that says, what about if the job looked like it ran, but it didn't really run? Catalyst knows in the case that a job fails, if for whatever reason that job is unsuccessful, Catalyst knows, and it'll show that to you in the history tab. So instead of saying bulk email recipients, it'll show you that the job failed. It'll say failed in red. Um, you shouldn't have a job fail because, again, all of the jobs, once you schedule it, is being run on our servers and doesn't need the agency at all for it to run. You don't have to be logged in. Your internet doesn't have to be up. Catalyst is backed up several times. So um, our servers are backed up and hosted in such a way that your job is going to run. Um, aside from you uh, deleting your, your distribution list or deleting a template, your job should run successfully with no problems, but you will see in the history tab if a job fails, we'll let you know in the history tab that it failed. And also in the notification, you're going to see that the job failed. Okay, we'll let you know when it started um, successfully, when it completed successfully, and it, um, if it failed, it won't say completed successfully. It will say both job failed. Okay, got a great question. It says, are there going to be any changes to the producer reconciliation statement? Because at the moment, it doesn't show whether it was for a policy change, like an endorsement, new business renewal, or a cancellation. 
Okay. We are going to be making changes to the reconciliation because we received two consistent requests for it. One being, when I'm reconciling the agency commission, I'd like to know which producers I need to go reconcile because I just reconciled the agency commission. That's one. That while I'm in the middle of the reconciliation, I want to be able to click, instead of seeing two producers, I want to see which producers specifically. So we're going to be working on something for that for you guys. The second one is, when I'm looking at the commission, I can't tell why there's a commission line. If it was because a new business policy was written or because there was an endorsement. That's, a, that's another thing that we're going to be working on for you guys. So if you have not submitted that in the feedback, I recommend that you do. I'm going to start making phone calls on what the feature is going to look like, and I want to run it by the people that requested the feature. So if you want to be included on that list, please be sure to submit your feedback. And by the way, you can imagine how much feedback we get in our feedback folder. So some people, you might get, you might submit a feedback request on September 1st, and then we email you back on September 22nd. And sometimes people write back and say, Dickinson, you guys are taking so long to reply. You will be surprised how many items come in that feedback folder. And we don't want to just quickly, you know, disregard them. We read your feedback. We go and see how many other agents have requested it. We include your QQID in that request as well as when you put in the feature that you want, if you also put in how you would like it to work, that would be really great because we put in all together. Here's the feature that's being requested by 40 agencies. Here's how they would like the feature to work. That helps me out a lot when I start to do the design for what it's going to look like and how it's going to work. And then I get you guys on the phone and we discuss together how it is the feature is going to be implemented and if it's going to go over well with your agency. So I highly recommend that you guys continue to do that. The more information you provide, the best. Now, the better. Now, I also say this. Try not to include 10 different requests on the same feedback item because then it's harder for me to identify you when it's time to give the phone calls. Because then if you have 10 different items, it's harder, it's harder for me to segment it off and say, here are all the QQIDs that requested picture messages to be able to send outbound picture messages and catalogs. Try to send them as individual feedback items if you can. All right, got a question that says, will the report be available to show us our employee productivity? Yes, we're going to be working on that. The first thing we're doing is changing the way that we store the information so that it can be easily reportable, and we're going to be able to build a standard report for you for employee productivity so you can start defining what it is that your employees do every day, whether it's emails, phone calls, if they're uploading files, if they're, you know, if they're updating endorsing policies, you'll be able to do some detailed reporting on your employees, and also you'll be able to view an audit log on your customers in the case that for whatever reason you get called in for an E&O claim or your customer makes some claim that they were never told about something and the management system will be able to itemize in detail everything that's happened on that customer's account for you to be able to generate a document for it. It's, it's going to be really, really, really nice. So for those of you who aren't part of that, um, if you haven't submitted an enhancement request for it, I highly recommend that you do because we're going to we already started making our phone calls, speaking to the agencies about how it's going to work, and I'm working on the designs for what it's going to look like. So if you'd like to be included in that, please submit a uh, feedback request. Ah, I got a question. Which carriers is sending claims to Catalyst? Well, right now, we don't actually have a set list of carriers that send claims. We just uh, had a couple of test, test files from um, some... I don't know which carrier sent us these test files. I know one carrier sent us a couple of t uh, claims test files, and then we looked at the Accord standard, and we built the feature to make sure it worked with all claims downloads, but we don't have a set number of carriers that send claims downloads. If the carrier sends it, we'll be able to process it. Um, and if, you, if you're interested, make sure, for those of you that want claims downloads from your carriers, make sure you give them a call and let them know. Claims downloads is available in Catalyst. If they can send you your claims via download, that would be great. Got a question. Can we schedule emails for a specific client, just one client, not at this time? At this time, you're unable to schedule an email job to just go to one client. Um, right now, you actually have to manually create that email job. All right. Um, 
All right, got a question that says, we are a new user and we don't see the text option for our plan, even though it's supposed to be included. Please give a contact, uh, please call your sales rep to make sure that it's included on your plan. And if it is included and it's not showing up, it's probably just not set up in your location preferences. For those of you who haven't done this already and you have the text messaging plan, you just go to location preferences. Make sure you've enabled the feature in location preferences. We assign your agency a text phone number and then you can set up your preferences for your text message signature and whether you want to be notified by email when a text message comes into the agency. Just make sure that you've set that up here in the apps. Enable text messaging. Okay, just make sure that's on yes. Your preferred area code, we, uh, we, we set you up with the phone number and you can do the notify agent, notify CSR, email agent, email CSR, and your text signature. All right, and I, have a, uh, I see that a text message signature has been added. Can we do an electronic signature to email? Well, yeah, you already have the electronic signature for emailing, and please correct me if I'm misunderstanding your question, but every user, if you go to the My Preferences or if you search for the employee contact, you're going to see in the user preferences an email signature that can be included on every email, which includes your coverage cannot be started or stopped or changed via the email, you know, via email communication. You can include that in this section. And of course my section is, is acting up, but there, you can include it in this section and save, and that's on every employee contact. Ah, I got a great question. For marketing, can scheduled jobs be edited or can contacts be added before going live? Absolutely. If the job hasn't run as of yet, any customer that you add to the database before that job is run will be a part. So long as they meet the criteria in your distribution list, they'll be included in the bulk email or print job. Remember, we don't run that query until the moment the job is scheduled to run. So if you have it scheduled to run at, let's say, 2.30 and you add a customer in at 2.25, we run the job, we run the query, find the list of customers first, and then we go populate the emails for them. So long as they're in the system and they meet the criteria, they'll be included in your job. Okay, got a question. Uh, first off, thank you very much for the, the, the encouraging words. We appreciate any, um, feed, any, uh, any feedback from you on making the system better, something that is going to make your life a little easier in the agency. Um, the development team is actively working on the speed issue. Now, I will say this, there, there are a combination of things when it comes to speed. Today, we did a release, and that release caused some type of issue regarding communication between the server and your communication with Kiki Catalyst. So typically, when you hit the contacts, contacts comes up instantly um, on a normal day. If you click on contact and it doesn't come up instantly for you, like if it takes any more than what you just saw, one of the things that we're starting to notice, and this is something that we're going to you know, definitely take a look at, and our product support team is here to help with it. I've seen agents that tell us, so I've gone on agency visits, where agencies have three megabits per second to six megabits per second internet speed, and the internet on your phone, for those of you who have 4G service, your, your phone service internet is faster than the internet service in the office. Um, we are doing benchmark tests right now for a recommended minimum, a recommended minimum megabytes per second for the insurance agencies using QQ Catalyst because remember, it is a web page and it is a web application. Now, I have gotten some emails back from customers saying, well, yeah, well, Catalyst is moving slow and I'm using another website and the other website is moving fast. It all depends on what's on that website. Uh, there are some websites that are flat. They don't have a lot of content on them, and they can you can speed through them really, really quickly. Like some people can log into Gmail really, really fast and go in and out really, really fast. But this is a web application. So we're talking about a lot of data being stored. But we've seen agents that have, I mean, let's say 10 to 15 megabits per second in their office, and Catalyst moves fast for them all the time. Um, so that's one of the things that we're looking into. We're looking into the agencies that are consistently reporting speed and performance issues in Catalyst, we have moments, now don't get me wrong, we have moments where the search has a problem. And once we know that it has a problem, you usually get an email from our product support team saying, hey, we're aware of the issue that's happening in Catalyst. But if you're clicking on the contact 
and it's taking longer than what you just saw there, if it's taking more than three to five seconds for the contact page to come up, then we're probably going to, if you're going to contact product support, they're probably going to want to do a benchmark test to see or a speed test to see how fast the agency's internet is going. Now, don't get me wrong, three to five megabits per second, if it's one person using an online web application, then it might not be noticeable that the internet speed may not be fast enough. But if there are five to six people using that same internet connection at three megabits per second, office-wide, and music is being streamed, and people are also surfing the web, you might notice some performance issues. So um, today, definitely, it's due to the release. But I want to make sure if you're consistently seeing speed issues with Catalyst, definitely give our product support team a call or do a speed test. Um, one of the sites that, can, that, can, that you can go to is speedtest.net. It'll tell you what your upload and your download speeds are. You definitely want to be north of 10 megabits per second. Um, or at least that's what, uh, you know, that's what we're seeing. The recommendation is definitely be at least 10 or more. Um, a lot of the places like Comcast, Comcast Business Internet right now, they're up to 50 at the minimum. That's where, and I mean, you're typing in the internet address. You're hitting enter, and by the time you hit enter, you're already on the website. So. Um, definitely recommend testing the agency internet speed to make sure you're at 10 or above. And if you can, highly recommend going to you know 20 or um, or and it all depends again based on the usage in your agency. I've seen agencies where there are 10 people using an internet connection that's at 5 megabits per second, and that very very slow. Ah, okay, somebody just asked about how to edit the text message signature. Um, you're going to go to Location Preferences, hover over your name, Preferences, Location Preferences. It's going to be in the Apps tab of the Location Preferences section. The Apps tab, there is a text messaging section, and it's right here, Signature. And you can put whatever you want to be the agency signature in there. I got a question concerning printing labels. At this time, no, you won't be able to print labels in Catalyst. But because of the fact that the distribution list works the way it does now, um, that's not going to be a difficult thing for us to do. But again, it's really big for you guys to put in your feedback request that I would like to print labels in QQ Catalyst. Um, and for those of you that want to print envelopes, same thing. Make sure you submit these feedback requests so that we can categorize them and include them in one of our upcoming releases. All right, the notification for an income text message is going to be shown. You can see text messages in two places. First, when you receive a text message, you're going to see a little blurb, like a little window open up right here, showing that a text message has been received. And then if you click here, you're going to see any text message alerts. All right, so you see the little, little blip that comes up here, and it says text message received with the customer's name and whatever the text message is. And if you click on this little notification, the bell, whenever a text message is received, will tilt to the right-hand side for you to go through your text messages. All right, I've um, got a question about when will 3.7 be released. This is actually 3.7. 3.8 is slated to be released later on this year, either towards the end of November or the beginning of December. Ah, okay. Got a question that says, is it possible for a note to pop up once I access the contact? Absolutely. That was included in QQ Catalyst version 3.6. For those of you that have an important note on your contact and you want it to always come up whenever you access that contact, you're going to go to your My Preferences page. Okay. Now, we made this a user preference because some people might find it annoying every time they go to a contact page that the important note pop-up comes up. But as you can see here, I have an important note on myself, and the important note came up automatically. That comes from right here, pop-up important notes. By default, it's set to no because we don't want people to be annoyed by it, but you can make this yes so that every single time you go to a contact, that pop-up will show up right on top of that contact. And that's only for the important notes. Whenever you go to a customer or any contact that has important notes, You'll see this little drop down here with all the important notes. Okay, got a great question. 
Well, some people don't have an email address, and some people you want to do a print job. Some people, you know, some people don't have an email address. So when you do the scheduled job, you want it to go to the printer instead. As of right now, we don't have that option. But that's a great request to put into the feedback, because now that we have both bulk email and bulk print jobs, it's not really difficult for us to say if they don't have an email address. By the way, send this letter to the print job, and I'll mail it to them instead. So make sure. You put that in the feedback. That's a great request there. Ah, good question. Are we limited as to how many jobs we can have in one day? No, not at all. If you want to send as you can send as many bulk jobs as you'd like. Can you receive photos such as a copy of the check? Absolutely. So whatever your contact can send to you via text message, Catalyst will be able to receive it, and you can easily attach that to your contacts file. Ah, I got a question. Is there a way for the carrier downloads to not pull the CSR's name with them in the log in the notes? Okay. The system will always show whoever it is that's processing the carrier downloads or whoever's assigned for that customer as in the log. But if you go into the log, you're also going to see who actually processed that download. It's going to show either the system or it's going to show that person. Let me see if I can show you an example here. It's been a while since I processed the download in this test database. So let me see if I can show you. When you go into the log, you're going to see that a download is processed and it may show the person's name, but next to the person's name in parentheses, it'll say system or system downloads. So you know that it was actually the system that did it. Now if it was a person that did it while using the system, like while doing downloads, they walked through manually and made the change, you'll see that person's name as well. If it was the downloads by itself, it would just say system downloads without the person's name. But here it says by Dickinson Marin, and if there was a parenthesis system downloads, it means that I walk through the process of manually doing it in the download process. But if it just says by system or by system downloads, that was the system that did it. And it's been a while since I processed one of these, so I guess I'm, it's going to be hard for me to find one. Okay, got a great question. Is there a way to automate tasks for employees? Right now, no. But that's another one of the requests that we've been seeing a lot more of for the agency to define what a user should do in the case that a certain action is taken. Um, if you haven't submitted a request already, please go ahead and do so. I'm actually in the process of designing uh, part of that feature, so I'd love to speak to you. Please go ahead and submit that through the feedback, and we'll give you a call. Ah, I got a great question. Can we schedule a mail out based on the insured's last name? Um, in other words, you want to be able to do an annual review letter to clients whose last name start with the letter S. That's a good question. Let's find that out all together. <laughs> That's a really good question. Let's take a look. One of the marketing sections. And let's go to distribution. Let's, let's go ahead and add a new list. I believe you can do it because I think we're going to be able to say customer last name and then I can put start with. So let's do that. Customers, and I'm going to make sure customer information is selected. And the report column I'm going to choose is customer last name. And I think that there's a begins with or starts with and I can say S. Now something to keep in mind, if you do it that way, if you do it that way, if on business customers, Hopefully your primary contact's last name starts with an S. Let's see here. Customer, let's make it last name. Starts with S. That'll work out for you. All right, got a question. For birthday list, if that contact is no longer a client, will it update it? Well, no. If the customer is no longer, if that client is no longer a customer, they should be made inactive. Because remember, your list should say where the customer status is active and the customer next birthday is. You don't want to just make it for everybody. I don't know how you know how well a person will appreciate 
if they, especially if they left your agency on bad terms, that you're sending them an email saying happy birthday. <laughs> you might want to make sure that if a customer is no longer with the agency, they've canceled all their policies with you, that you, they, they're still, you could still leave them as a customer, but just change their status from active to inactive so they no longer receive any kind of email communication from you. Got another great question. Well, now that you have scheduled emails, they can say, are you guys going to do scheduled reports? Absolutely. Scheduled reports is slated for within, within the next two releases. Not sure exactly which one is going to be included in, but we're also going to include scheduled reports, which allow you to tell us when you want a report to run and which email addresses you'd like that email to be sent to. So that is something that's slated for an upcoming release. Um, if you haven't submitted a feedback request on that, go ahead and do so because we're wrapping up the design for that as well. Love to show it to you guys, and uh, you'll let us know what you think. All right, can I, can I as a business owner add a task to one of my producers? Absolutely. Whoever that employee contact is, you can go to the employee contact and click on new task, or you can just click on new task here and assign it just to them. So you can either assign it on them as an employee or you can assign it to them if there's something that they need to actually do. All right, yes, the, the current webinar is being re re um, recorded, but some of you have re uh, told me that some of the audio wasn't coming out clearly, so I'm probably going to re-record this, but instead of doing it in a 30 to 50 minute window, I'll probably go over each individual feature in like three to five minute little clips, and then you can watch exactly what it is that you want to watch about the new, about the new release. All right, we are new to Kiki Catalyst. Um, all the webinars and links will be helpful. Oh, great. Listen, for those of you that are wondering where are those um, links to previous webinars, you can either go to our YouTube page to view them all, or instead just hover over your name, go to support training, and you can go to training classes or on-demand training video. I mean, I'm sorry, it's the help and help videos and tutorials. So one, you can go to training classes. And if you haven't registered for training in QQ Catalyst yet, I highly recommend that you do. There are a lot of features in QQ Catalyst, and you'd be surprised how difficult it is to manage both balance, giving people robust functionality and features, and making it easy to use. There are a lot of things about Catalyst that are easy to use, but there are other things that you're definitely going to have to you know, either attend training on or watch videos on. If you click on Video On Demand, you'll be able to view a bunch of little vignettes that we've created for features that you can complete in Kiki Catalyst. You can watch those vignettes on demand. You can also go to the video, uh, the our YouTube channel where we have pretty much every single webinar that we've done. You can go to Kiki Solutions on YouTube and you can view all of our recorded webinars and training classes. Okay, do we need to input both basic contact info and business contact info? Well, yes. For your commercial contact, that business has a phone number. You know, um, now I will say there are some places that probably have, you know, if there's a, a very small business, the guy's cell phone number is his business phone number. But yes, you would put it in both places because you typically your commercial customers are going to have a business phone number. And then the people within the business are going to have their own cell phone numbers and their own email addresses. So for the people that are the commercial contacts with their own phone numbers, you're definitely going to want to put their contact information, the business's contact information, up top. Let us know what department that phone number belongs to. And by the way, if there's a department in here that's common among businesses and it's not listed here, we'll be happy to add that in there for you. But we kept on getting requests from people saying, I want to put in the phone number, but who it belongs to as well. But, see, it wouldn't be good for you to have to put in, in here, either by typing in a field or choosing a drop-down for a person. Rather, we'd rather you put in all the people relating to that business in the contact section and put their phone number and their email addresses with that specific contact. 
Now, for your personal customers, you don't have to do that. And the personal customers, your basic contact info belongs to that person. Ah, that's a good question. Okay, I got a question from someone saying, okay, Dickinson, is there a way for me to see all of the feedback that I've previously sent into QQ? Unfortunately, no, there's no way for you to see it. Um, we can see all the feedback that you submitted. So if you'd like for me to send you a copy of the feedback that you sent in, I'd be happy to send that to you as well. You can just send that to in the feedback, put in, you know, not, don't, don't put it as a feedback option. Select feedback and put in question and put, can you send me a copy of all the feedback that I've sent in? And I'll, I'll be happy to send that over to you. But you should probably also put it in the feedback, say, hey, Dickinson, I'd like a way for me to see all the feedback that I've previously submitted. Because then it's probably going to be easier for you to track of what you've submitted, what's already been implemented. Do we have only one phone number for texting? Yes, the phone numbers are one number for the agency location. If you have multiple locations, you have multiple phone numbers. Okay, no, no, each user will not have their own texting number. This is a phone number for the agency. So everyone will be sending text messages from the agency phone number and they'll be receiving text messages to the agency phone number as well. Ah, I got another really good question. You're asking some really good questions and I like the questions. When will an agency administrator have the ability to globally change the agent or CSR on a policy in the case that an employee leaves the agency and I hire a new employee or if someone's terminated and I need to update their policies. That's another feature that we're in the middle of doing some research on. Doing research on because we have to build this new and I'll talk to you guys openly about it. It's going to be an employee management section. Employee management page where you'll be able to do things like mass reassign policies. Like we receive requests that say look, whenever a policy is created in the system, if it's a commercial policy and it falls between the letters A and C, these are the people that should be listed as agent and CSR. Um, if it falls between you know, this premium and that premium, it should be this agent and CSR. So we're in the middle of doing the research on it. And we love to speak to any agency who has their own unique way of auto assigning policies to employees as well as when you're doing a bulk update from one employee to another for all the policies, we'd love to talk to you. So if you haven't submitted that in the feedback yet, go ahead and do so so I can give you a call. Got a question that says, would health insurance companies be able to send us policy info and commission data? It all depends on if they're following the Accord standard for download. If they are, yes. If they are not, no, unfortunately. Because we go with the Accord standard for when we receive download files. Um, so long as carriers are following that standard and they send us the file, we'll be able to process it. But if they're not following that standard, we won't be able to process their download. Oh, got another question concerning the text message signature. Yes, that is in the location preferences. You have to have permission to the location preference that preferences to have access to it. You hover over your name, preferences, location preferences. And it's going to be in the apps tab, the apps tab here. In the text messaging section, it's right here, signature. And you can type in what the, what the agent, this is for the agency now, every single outbound text message is going to have this appended to the bottom of it. So you want to make sure it's something specific to the agency, something that's not specific to a customer, but for the agency. And for those of you who don't have some kind of legal disclaimer on your text messages, you might want to confer with your legal department or something, but I think the standard language for insurance right now is coverage cannot be started, stopped, or changed via text message communication. You might want to also include something about saving this number to your, you know, to your insurance contact and the person's phone. But you definitely want to have some kind of disclaimer so they don't think that they can send you a text message that says, hey, increase my coverage to a million dollars, then they get into a wreck two minutes later and they think they have a million dollars worth of coverage. Because you know someone's going to do that, right? Someone's going to do that. I got a question that says, can you have text messages that you send 
appear only on your bell and not other users. Okay, well here's the complication with that. The text messages, based on what you set up here, because you see, we're not going to notify everybody, we're going to notify whoever you request. So there's an option to notify the agent or to notify the CSR. There's only one agent and one CSR assigned to the customer. So if you only want the agent assigned uh, to be notified, just uncheck CSR. And if you only want the CSR assigned, uncheck, um, CS, uncheck the, uh, the agent. So only, we're only going to notify who you want us to notify in the bell. When a text message comes in, that one person will get the notification. And in many cases, the agent and the CSR are the same person. So the only two people that will be notified, and if they're different, is the agent and CSR if they're two different people. All right, so I got a question concerning sending that bulk email. If you wanted to send bulk emails for people's birthdays, the first thing you have to do is build a distribution list. All right, um, the distribution list is nothing more but criteria you build for Catalyst to run a report and then take an action. So imagine building a report and then Catalyst is going to run that report and based on who falls in that list, you're going to tell us who to send the email or letter to. So you're going to come to marketing to the marketing section. You're going to add a new list. Now you may already have one, by the way. So for those of you who already had a distribution list with the birthday, the only thing you're going to change in your distribution list is you're going to remove those columns we had in there before: customer birth month, customer birth day, custom customer birth date. Remove all of those. You don't need those columns anymore. We built the field that you actually need, which is customer next birthday. And when you select customer next birthday, you're going to make sure customer next birthday is set for, let's say, yesterday or today or tomorrow. All right, so I'm going to do customer information only. When you click next, I recommend that you use people that are currently with an active status. <laughs> Please don't include people that are in. If you don't say customer status is active, it's going to look through the database for anyone who's a customer contact, whether they have active policies with you or not. And I'm not sure if the person who's no longer with your agency left on good or bad terms and how they're going to react if the agency sends them an email saying, hey, happy birthday, by the way. You know, so you want to make sure in your report right here in your, in your criteria, the first thing that you select is customer status is active. Make sure it's active contact. And then when you click on add another, um, add another filter, you want to select customer next birthday. And the next birthday means we're going to look for when that person's birthday is going to occur again. Uh, so, you know, for well, the next birthday, and don't select is between or before or after. You want to select smart date. And let's just say you want to make sure you send it to them on the day of their birthday. You want to send this to them. You want to select today as your smart date. If you want to run the report for people with the birthday of tomorrow, but you want to send them the email today, You'll make sure you select where the customer next birthday is tomorrow, and you're going to send that as a frequency of daily. So that means today, the job would have went out and said, we want to wish you a happy birthday for everybody with the birthday of tomorrow. It's probably going to be better if you send it to them the day of their birthday, so you probably want to select where the smart date is today. And then when you, when you save this, let me go ahead and save it, walk you through the entire thing. So I'm going to say... Active customer birthday list. So today, as you can see, if I ran the report for today, I have nobody with the birthday of today, and that's okay because remember, we're gonna we're gonna if you set this up on an automatic schedule, we're gonna run this report every day at the time that you designated to see if the person if you have a person with that birthday, and then we're gonna send them whatever template that you built. All right. So that was in my agency library that I just saved that. Let me sort this by date modified. So it's active customer birthday. That's the one that I just built. Now, in order to do the scheduled job, you're going to click on schedule new job, or you can just click on the list and click create book job schedule. So it automatically puts an active customer birthday in there. So I'm going to say here birthday email sent to customer. Because you're going to want to know what that email was that you sent to that customer. It's a birthday email that was sent to the customer. I'm going to select the bulk email job as the way I'm going to deliver this. Select what email address you want it to come from. By the way, if you don't see anything in this from drop down, it's because you haven't assigned any approved email addresses to yourself or to whichever employee 
is getting ready to, to do the job. So make sure you have an approved email address in here. And then you can say, happy birthday. Now, you want to make sure you already have a template. By the way, you have to have a template. So your template would have already said, we at the My Best Insurance Agency would like to wish you a very happy birthday. And of course, you're going to have a picture of a birthday cake with candles. And you're not getting older. You're just getting better. I don't know who believes that anymore, especially once you pass the age of 30. Like, I don't feel like that anymore. But hey, beautiful words for a beautiful birthday. Happy birthday. And then you can put when you want this job to start. So I'm going to say starting tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, or maybe not 8 o'clock, maybe 9 o'clock, because that means they would have left home and somebody at home forgot their birthday already, and they're going to get this wonderful email from the agency letting them know we didn't forget your birthday. So starting tomorrow, make sure your frequency is selected as daily. You don't want to select once. And remember, we're limiting your, your options here in the frequency to make sure you don't accidentally send the customer's email every single day, like up until their birthday or after their birthday. So you want to do this for daily. And I want to send this every day, even if their birthday falls on a Saturday, and no end date. And then click Schedule. Oh, I forgot to select my template. Let me see. Do I have a birthday template? I think I do. Birthday email template. Schedule. And now that job is scheduled. It's going to run tomorrow. And when it's done running tomorrow, it's going to run again the following day. And it's just going to keep on going every single day. And because I selected customer next birthday of tomorrow, you never have to come back here and edit the job. Because year over year, it's going to just keep on looking for whose birthday is the following day. So I'm hoping that made, for those of you that are requesting the birthday email thing, I hope that, that makes your job a lot easier. Literally, you can set scheduled jobs and never have to touch them again. Oh, by the way, I got a question concerning the mobile app for QQ. Yes, the mobile app for Apple, for the, uh, Apple is available. For Apple fans, it is in the Apple um, iTunes store. I think I said that right, the Apple iTunes store. I'm not an Apple fan myself, so I'm sorry if I got it wrong. But for Android and Apple, we do have the QQ Catalyst mobile app that allows you to view contact information, um, to view, I believe it also allows you to view task information. So feel free to download that from the uh, App Store. OK, got the comment concerning um, if you're off, you're off that 50 megabits per second and Catalyst is still giving you consistent issues with speed, please give our product support team a call because we've been telling them about this. We want to specifically research why you're experiencing lagging in Catalyst. Now, we're not talking about the issues where there's an actual outage. When there's an outage, everybody's affected by the speed issue. But on, if on an everyday basis, you're viewing that Catalyst is always running slow, we really need to look into your database to see what's going on. So please call our product support team and let them know that Dickinson said to create a ticket uh, for us to know that you're one of the agencies that experience this lagging issue with QP Catalyst all the time. All right, wrapping up these last couple of questions here. Ah, customers are calling back your text number. Is there any way for the, um, is there any way to handle that? Yes. The company that we work with do the text messaging feature, they do have the ability they do have the ability to forward a phone call if somebody calls your text number that they can forward the phone call to your agency's phone number. Right now, we're trying to uh, work out something for them regarding the cost because they do charge per minute that the, eight, that the person's on the phone call with you. So we want to make sure that we implement the feature that you want, but that's not going to end up costing you so much. Um, they do charge, I think, for they, they charge some amount every minute that that phone call is connected. So we're, we'll be working on it. Uh, make sure if you haven't submitted that request that you submit the request. And we'll talk about, once we get all the, the financial information from our, from our uh, third party vendor there, that we communicate that with you. And you tell us whether or not uh, you'd like to in, include that feature in Catalyst um, for whatever the cost is going to be for forwarding those phone numbers. Can I access QQ Catalyst on my Android? Yes, QQ Catalyst, don't forget, is a website. So you can access QQ Catalyst from any device with a modern browser. So long as you have internet access, you can access QQ Catalyst on it. So that's your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, your PC, anywhere in the world. And the, we do now have mobile apps that are available in the Apple Store as well as the uh, Android Google Play Store.
Ah, I got a question concerning printing envelopes. Yes. That's another one that if you want to print envelopes, make sure you submit that in the feedback. Just make sure it's in there because again, it goes, we do a lot of these features. If we have two features that are really, really great, 100 customers have requested one feature and three have requested another one, we're going to go with the one that's going to make 100 people happy as opposed to the three. And it doesn't mean that the three aren't important, it's just that it's easier to make 100 people happy than to make just the three happy. Can we send prospecting? Uh, can we send prospecting to come back, come back letters to customers who left us? Yes, you can. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is if you have a customer who has left you and they have no active policies, make them an inactive contact. And then when you build your distribution list, make sure you select where the customer status is inactive. And then you can send a prospecting letter to all of those customers who left you before. And that would be a great campaign to get started to try to win them back to your agency. All right, got a question concerning creating tasks for your employees. You can create tasks for your employees throughout the day. Um, there's just not a way to do that automatically. So there's no way to do automated tasks. And that's something that you'd like to see in Catalyst again. Submit that as a feedback. We'll be happy to try to get these features in for you. Got a question concerning cell phones being in the drop down for a business? No, we've actually pulled those out of the business section for you to just put the business phone numbers and then for you to put whoever that cell phone number belongs to on the person in the business contact section. Okay, got a question. It says, how are text messages put into the client files if the number is linked to multiple accounts? Here's how we determine that. If you send a text message to a customer and that customer texts back, Catalyst is going to look to see what message is this a reply to, and we're going to find the original message and say, okay, this is the customer it belongs to. If that phone number exists on multiple contacts, we're going to look to see was there a communication from the agency to the customer. If there was only a communication on one of them, we're going to attach that reply back to the one that the communication was sent from. If both of them had a communication to the customer, we're going to attach it to the one that was the most recently sent. So if I had customer A and customer B, I sent a text message to both of them. One of them I sent a text message to on September 1st. The second one I sent a text message to that same number on September 22nd. When the customer replies, we're attaching it to the one on the 22nd. That's how it does the, uh, the tiebreaker. Now, we have received requests that, hey, what if I accidentally, what if the customer sends me an unsolicited text message and I never sent them anything, they just saw my text number, and it attaches, and it's part, the phone number exists on two contacts, and it's on the wrong one. We're looking for a way now to give you the ability to reassociate text messages to the right contact. So that is something that we've received requests for. If you haven't submitted a request for it, we'll be happy to get that in there. Go ahead and submit it in the feedback so we can have you on the list. All right, got a question that says, if an insured has more than one email, will it send to every email? No, it won't. It will send to the primary email address for that contact. We're only sending to the primary email address. Okay, got a question that says, how do I access the mobile app? On your phone, if you're with iTunes, you go into the App Store. If you're with, if you're with uh, Google or an Android device, you're going to go into the Google Play Store and just type in QQ Catalyst and you'll see the mobile app available for download. All right, it looks like that's all the questions that you guys had for me today. Listen, I really appreciate those of you that have stuck around and answered the questions. We are very thankful that we have you as QQ Catalyst subscribers. It just keeps getting better and better, and it's getting better because of your feedback. So continue to send us your feedback. I hope you enjoyed all these new features and enhancements we have available for you in QQ Catalyst version 3.7. I'm going to put up the contact information one last time here for those of you that need to get in touch with us, either for training classes or uh, if you need to submit feedback, how you can do that. Thank you once again and have a great afternoon.